Think about it. And they even brag about how the U.S. government blew up the Maine way back at the turn of the century as a pretext to have the Spanish-American War. They brag for 20-plus pages about how problem-reaction-solution has been used throughout history. It's their classic game. It's their favorite mode of control. And again, don't believe the documents that I just showed you. I want you to go check it out at InfoWars.com in the Government Prior Knowledge section. And when you read that ABC News article, when you read that Baltimore Sun article, when you link through the National Security Archives and read the document, the actual declassified document, for yourself where the government planned things along the exact lines of what we all witnessed on September 11th, that horrible tragedy, then you'll be forced to know it's true. Then you'll be forced to take action. So don't dismiss the things we're uncovering here for a single solitary second. And as well, later on in this presentation, I'm going to actually show you a clip off my television show from July 25th, right here in Austin, Texas, when I predicted that the federal government was preparing to attack America with phony terrorist attacks as a pretext for martial law and control. And then we'll get into the evidence uh, that clearly states that we're already under martial law. But it's what implement, what level, what degree of martial law are we going to accept as it grows, as they incrementally condition us to accept it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Problem, reaction, solution. And there are many other government documents we don't even have time to cover in this presentation. But this is an interactive expose, so please visit InfoWars.com, government prior knowledge of the September 11th attack section. Now is a good time to go ahead and tell you about some of the players, some of the highly respected journalists, prosecutors, government officials that went public before September 11th saying that an attack on Lower Manhattan was imminent. One of them, of course, is David Shippers, the former prosecutor in Chicago who brought down one of the biggest organized crime families in U.S. history. He's a little bit more well-known for being the prosecutor that the House Judiciary Committee hired to impeach William Jefferson Clinton, uh, the President of the United States. I've interviewed David Shippers twice since the September 11th attack, and I actually have news articles where before the September 11th tragedy, David Shippers was representing FBI agents and defense intelligence officers, and we'll get more into this later and show you the actual documents on that as well, the actual BBC and Washington Time news articles. Why was David Shippers representing FBI and defense intelligence officers and agents? Well, because they were being threatened by the Bush administration in 2001 that they would be arrested under national security if they attempted to stop the al-Qaeda terrorists operating in this country that the federal government was publicly funding to the tune of $132 million in the two months leading up to September 11th alone. And again, all of these news stories are coming up and are posted on my website. I mean, it's hard to believe. I don't even know how to do this presentation. There's so much evidence. It's just mounds of it, stacks of it. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, this is a major crisis. They're using this to destroy our freedom. They're using this to usher in nightmarish levels of control. This is the biggest issue, the biggest event in human history. Not because of the 3,000 people dead. That was a horrible tragedy. But because of the societal de-evolution, the dehumanization that we're witnessing. Humankind being taken literally into the depths of a worldwide police state. So understand, ladies and gentlemen, David Schiffers was beating on John Ashcroft, the U.S. Attorney General's door, saying, I've got three boxes of files. I represent these FBI agents, these defense intelligence officers, who you have told you will arrest if they stop the terrorists 
training at the Pensacola Naval Air Station with the U.S. military training them to fly large aircraft. Months before the attack, in early 2001, later we'll get to an MSNBC and uh, Pensacola News Journal report on that, several mainstream reports, that the U.S. government was funding these terrorists. So David Shippers is begging them, beating on the door, calling them, saying, you've got to stop them. They're going to hijack these planes very soon. He even got Jaina Davis, the investigative reporter who exposed government involvement in the Oklahoma City bombing in 95 on the O'Reilly factor, March 14th. But O'Reilly, of course, cut her short, cut that segment short, and wouldn't let her get all the warnings out. So think about the magnitude of this. David Shippers was beating on the Justice Department's door, calling Congress, meeting with them, begging them to stop the terrorist attacks. But they wouldn't listen. And since September 11th, he's been doing radio interviews all over this country. But the newspapers won't touch it. They will, though, cover many of the facets of it, and we're going to get into it. So now is a good time... Before we get into the key section of this expose to play a clip of George W. Bush, George Bush Jr., the son of former President Bush, the son of the former CIA director, President Bush, the son of the former head UN ambassador, President Bush, the son of the former ambassador to China, George Herbert Walker Bush. And I, I, I tell you all of the former president's titles so you understand that they're very good at lying. They're very good at putting on a phony face and conning you. That's what the CIA does, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very wicked organization. It's public knowledge now. They bring in the majority of the narcotics. And George Bush ran that organization. And now his son runs this country. The current president's father was a U.N. ambassador, was an ambassador to China, was the head of the CIA, face the facts. So before we get into government prior knowledge and involvement and go through these stories one by one in detail from a host of mainstream media sources, but no one's putting it all together for you. They're just quietly reporting it, but the nightly news doesn't pick it up and magnify it like they do O.J. Simpson or Congressman Condit, issues of little or no significance. Before we get to this key area of the film, but every facet is vital, so please stay with us. I hope you have the attention span to do it. I know they've tried to condition that out of you. Let's play President Bush November 10th at the United Nations General Assembly, and he took time out to attack the American people and others that at that very time, at that very point, were exposing him, even in the BBC, for funding, training, protecting, and shepherding the terrorists into this country with prior knowledge and letting them attack us. This shows we're getting to Bush, this phony conservative. He's worse than Clinton. Bill Clinton was a complete criminal. We exposed all of that endlessly. The sellout of the missile secrets, the rapes, the murders, the anti-Second Amendment behavior. But in comes George Bush... And the good conservatives of this country are supposed to go to sleep, not for a second. And then we're going to have a clip of Attorney General John Ashcroft claiming they're not taking our rights away a little bit later in the show. And then we're going to cover the actual legislation, the actual USA Patriot Act, H.R. 3162, that abolishes three major amendments to our Bill of Rights, to our Constitution. So it's all coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Here is George W. Bush, son of the former president, son of the former CIA director, son of the former U.N. ambassador and Chinese ambassador, who in 1991, on September 11th, at the very same podium, pledged the American people to a sacred oath to the United Nations. He pledged you and I to the murdering anti-American, world government promoting United Nations. And now here's his son, all these years later in 2001, saying, don't blame people, don't blame us for this. Here's George Bush. Stay with us. 
We must speak the truth about terror. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. For you will lose your liberty. We need honest, reasoned debate, not fear-mongering. To those who pit Americans against immigrants and citizens against non-citizens, to those who scare peace-loving people with phantoms of lost liberty, my message is this. Your tactics only aid terrorists, for they erode our national unity and diminish our resolve. They give ammunition to America's enemies and pause to America's friends. They encourage people of goodwill to remain silent in the face of evil. Our efforts have